Welcome to Film 116, Introduction to Film. The purpose of this video is to give you an idea of which aspects of movies and movie making we will be examining in this course, as well as the different ways of analyzing and interpreting movies that this course will introduce you to. There are five issues related to film that this course examines, and these five things are what we will be focusing our study of film on in Film 116. So in other words, these are the things we will be spending the entire semester reading about, discussing, and writing about, as well as what we will be learning through watching and interpreting movies in class. Issue 1 examined in this course is the different uses of movies. In Film 116, we will be looking at the different ways that filmmakers use movies to either communicate information, tell stories, or create visual art. As part of that, we will also be learning about the different filmmaking techniques that are used to make movies and to organize and present movie content to audiences. The second issue related to movies examined in this course is the way that audiences engage with movies. So in other words, in Film 116, we will also explore the different ways that audiences watch and interpret movies, as well as some of the different frameworks that can be used to analyze movies. There are a lot of different frameworks for analyzing movies and a lot of different ways that movies can be analyzed. But three of the most common frameworks for analyzing movies are narrative analysis, formal analysis, and thematic analysis. While these are not the only types of movie analysis that we are going to learn about, they are the ones that we will be using the most in Film 116, and they are the ones that we will place our emphasis on in terms of analyzing the movies that we watch for class. We will be going into this in much more detail over the course of the entire semester, but just to give you an idea of the kinds of things that we will be talking about when we analyze movies in class, narrative analysis involves analyzing the story that the movie tells. This includes what happens in the story, what and who the story is about, and how the plot events that make up the story are organized and presented to audiences. It also can, and often does, involve consideration of the perspective from which the movie story is told. Perspective in this sense encompasses both the point of view within the story, so in other words, from which perspectives of which character or characters within the story, we see that story unfold on screen. But it also encompasses consideration of the perspectives that shaped the creation of the film when it was being made. Who produced it? Who wrote it? Who was involved in the creative decisions behind making it? And how all of that impacts the kinds of stories that movies tell and what they have to say about the subjects of those stories. This is also something that we will be examining in this class. When it comes to analyzing movie stories, analyzing the story itself is only one part of what we look at. The other part is the way that the story is presented to audiences on screen. How the story is presented is the form that the movie takes, so this kind of analysis is known as formal analysis. Formal analysis considers all of the ways in which choices about how movies are written, staged, shot, edited, and have sound added to them affect the ideas and the meanings that audiences interpret from those movies. This too is something that we will be examining in depth in Film 116. Both the perspective from which movies are made and decisions about how movie stories are presented to audiences intersect with questions about movie authorship. Auteur analysis is the term for the type of movie analysis that considers debates about whether the writer, the director, or some combination of all of the people who provide creative input into the making of a movie can be considered to be the author of that movie. The term auteur is the French word for author, and it is the name for this kind of movie analysis because it originated in France in the period after World War II. 
While we are not going to spend a lot of time delving into the nuances of those debates in Film 116, we will spend some time considering the ways in which, because there are only a limited number of filmmaking techniques that can be used to make movies, and all movies are made using those same techniques, specific films attempt to use those techniques in unique and creative ways. And specific filmmakers often develop a personal style of using those techniques that define them as filmmakers and set their movies apart from movies made by other filmmakers with other personal filmmaking styles. Because analyzing movie stories and analyzing movie form both involve analyzing the deeper meaning of a movie, the other kind of movie analysis that we will be learning and practicing in Film 116 is thematic analysis. You can think of a movie's themes as being the larger ideas that are explored through the movie's story, as well as the deeper meanings that are communicated through that story. All movies have a meaning, though some are relatively simplistic and some are more complex or nuanced. When filmmakers make movies, they do so not just because they have a story that they want to tell, but also because they always have an idea that they want to explore or a meaning that they want to communicate through that story. Thematic analysis focuses on interpreting those larger ideas and deeper meanings. At the same time, the stories that movies tell both impact and are impacted by the things that we as a culture believe about ourselves, the world around us, and the places of different groups of people in that world. Movies reflect these things, but they also shape them in terms of the way that movies are one of many aspects of popular culture that impact the way that we see and think about the world around us and our own individual places in that world. Movies sometimes celebrate the things that our culture values, and at other times movies question those values and the emphasis placed on them. Movies sometimes reflect cultural anxieties or cultural tensions, and sometimes they reflect on them. In other cases, movies critique social inequalities and social injustices, while in others they ignore them, and in still yet others, they excuse them or justify them. Movies can be made to preserve the status quo or to advocate for change. They can be made to commemorate, to honor, to mourn for, or to reevaluate the past. They can be made to document, to validate, or to challenge the present. And they can be made to imagine, to warn against, or to aspire to different futures. Similarly, movies can validate our sense of self and our lived experiences. They can also introduce us to and invite us to empathize with people, cultures, experiences, and ways of living that are different from our own. Movies can expose us to new ideas and to new perspectives. And sometimes they can even get us to see ourselves or to see the world around us in an entirely new way. This cultural dimension of movies is the fourth issue related to movies that we will be examining in Film 116, as we will be considering not only the relationship between movie stories, movie form, and movie meanings, but also the larger social and cultural contexts and implications of movie stories and movie themes. Finally, since our study of all four of those issues involves examining movies as forms of popular entertainment, forms of artistic expression, and cultural artifacts all at the same time, we are also going to spend a little bit of time in Film 116 considering what constitutes a great work of cinema. We're going to look at some films that are considered by film historians, film scholars, and film critics to be among the greatest movies of all time, and we will consider what value such criteria has for helping us to evaluate movies in terms of artistry, technical skill, and cultural impact. However, we will also consider the limitations of this great works of cinema model both in terms of the criteria used to designate movies as great works 
and in terms of the restrictions in the number and also the perspectives of who gets to determine that criteria. And we will consider how this skews cultural perceptions of so-called cinematic masterpieces towards very specific kinds of films made by very specific kinds of filmmakers, while excluding or marginalizing others. So that's what Film 116 is and what it involves. Here's how taking this course can benefit you regardless of what your major is and what kinds of things you can get out of taking Film 116 beyond just the grade on your transcript or the fulfillment of the visual and performing arts general education requirement. From the time that they were first invented at the end of the 19th century, movies have been one of the most popular forms of entertainment, both around the world and here in the United States. And that remains true today, in spite of all of the other media formats that now exist alongside movies, and that also provide us with forms of entertainment. While movie viewing varies on the individual level, both globally and nationally, we spend a lot of our leisure time watching movies. So understanding more about them helps us to understand a big and very fundamental part of the world around us and the culture that we live in. At the same time, because, as I just mentioned, the stories that movies tell can also tell us things about what we as a culture believe about ourselves, the world around us, and our places in that world, the stories that movies tell also give us insight into where we are at a particular social and historical moment, what we as a culture believe, what we value, what we hope for, and what we fear. So there is a way in which studying movies does not just allow us to understand a form of entertainment that is a big part of our culture, but it allows us to understand our culture itself. Examining how movies do this allows us to understand and appreciate them at another level. But at the same time, it also helps to make all of us more savvy consumers of visual media in all of its forms something that is particularly important in the early 21st century when we rely so heavily on all forms of media for information as well as for entertainment. Here's one example of this. We increasingly communicate with each other on a daily basis through combinations of text and symbols. The skills for interpreting images and symbols that you will learn from analyzing movies will also make you more skilled at both engaging in and understanding this other method of communication in all its various forms. Here's another example. There is not a single major currently offered at Rhode Island College in which the careers that they prepare students to pursue do not routinely involve either some kind of visual communication or the need to be able to interpret body language and facial expressions. These two are skills that we exercise when we watch and interpret movies. So even if movies are not directly related in any way to your major or to the career that you plan on pursuing after college, there is still a way in which taking this course will help you in terms of developing skills that will prepare you for those careers and also make you better at doing them. So let's get started. Welcome to Film 116, 